My name is Daniel Johns. Let's fix something. I'm at my in-laws house. They're not currently in the room. I noticed they've got a knob on their toaster oven that's broken. I'm gonna do a stealth fix. I'm gonna try to 3D model it and replace it and then see if they notice. I haven't gotten caught yet. I see a bug. If you want to annoy etymologists and entomologists at the same time, call these things lady beetles. So I took some pictures and I got an idea for the size of the knob, but I need to get it a little bit more precise. So I took three photos and lined them up in 3D space and I scaled them according to the ruler that I have in one of the photos. I told SketchUp um, using the tape measure tool, all right, point A and point B, between those two points is one centimeter, and that scales the photo appropriately. This will help me rough it in, and then I can iterate on this design and, and dial it in really close so it's functional. That wasn't too bad time-wise. Uh, took a little bit of effort to line things up, but overall, I think this is pretty close to the right size. Now, what I think and what reality is maybe two different things. In order to prepare this file for 3D printing, I need to bring it into uh, Cura. I'm using Cura for my slicer. That takes a 3D file and turns it into a bunch of 2D layers that the printer can actually print. Because the printer is just doing a 2D layer and it moves up another 2D layer. So you gotta take the 3D file and turn it into G-code and the printer can print it. After bringing this model into Cura, we can see what the support structure is going to look like. I, I switched it over um, to layer view in Cura. Up in the top right, there's a little drop down. Switch to layer view. You can see what each layer is going to look like when, it, when it's printed. And you can see what the support structure is going to look like. And the support structure is there because you have a pretty major overhang. And you don't want that. The, the printer can't just print in air. So it needs to build up a support structure and print on top of it. And that's what's going on here. I've got the file loaded and I'm ready to start printing. So it is done printing and it took about an hour and 34 minutes and let's see what it looks like. You know, I'm pretty happy with this. Oh, and I, that's why I threw it away. I'm pretty happy with this as a prototype. It's the very first one that I printed. Uh, there's a couple things I'm gonna change. I think I'm just gonna thicken up the handle a bit and the skirt a bit. Um, but overall, this is good for testing. Here's one thing that I'm not sure of. I'm a little concerned about. I don't know how warm the post gets for that toaster oven. So, yeah, we'll see. The printing temperature is like 245 degrees Celsius for this plastic. But a good bit below that, it probably is still will deform really easily. And it's a toaster oven. And I just, I don't know. We'll have to test it out, see what, see what, it, see how it works. I'm at my in-laws again. I'm going to see if I can stealthily test fit this knob onto their toaster oven and see if it works, see if it fits. But the way this key works, it actually, the key doesn't start until, I don't know, four or five millimeters into the knob. So I need to fix that. Now that I've gathered some more information, I'm going to redesign a little bit. I'm also going to try a new program. I'm going to try something called FreeCAD. Free CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. And uh, since this part is fairly simple, I think it might be a good learning opportunity for me to try a new program. Uh, it's a parametric CAD program. What I find with uh, parametric modeling in FreeCAD is it is a little less intuitive up front when you're first designing the model, but it gives you the ability to easily make changes to the model after you've created it. The direct modeling, like in SketchUp, to me was a little more intuitive at first. 
when you first make the model, but it can be problematic if you have to make small adjustments after the model's been created. So there's some trade-offs there, and depending on what your project is, you might choose one or the other, um, but you could just kind of have to get a feel for the differences, and I think FreeCAD's a good way to do that. I've been happy with it so far. So I've added some primitive shapes, I've done some fillets and some chamfers to a cube to get this handle profile. Uh, things are coming along. Before I exported it, I added a few more little rounded edges using the fillet function. And I think, I think it looks nice. Yeah, I like it. I find it's a whole lot easier to learn something if you have a goal in mind. Like, this is just a simple toaster oven knob, but having that small goal was a great opportunity for me to learn a new kind of software. So this is free CAD parametric modeling, never done it before, but I knew what I wanted to achieve and that helped me learn the pieces of the software that I needed to know to get my end result. Hopefully it'll work. Here we have the latest version, fresh off the printer. I'm going to weed it. I don't know if you call it, do you call it weeding when it's 3D printing? And in vinyl cutting, you would call removing the excess material weeding. I'm going to call it weeding. I'm going to weed it, take all the supports and stuff off, and see what it looks like. This is what we've got for the second version of the toaster oven knob. Now I've just got to have a good excuse to go back over to my in-laws house and stealthily test it. I'm gonna need to make a couple more alterations. I think we're getting close though. I think we're getting really close. Just a quick update. I've had two failed prints in a row. This one got knocked off the bed and so the printer was just kind of hanging out spitting plastic out the, in midair. This one got stuck to the nozzle of the printer and so the plastic just kind of came out and oozed out. However, I think this one has enough, had enough printed that I can at least test the slightly tighter design. I've got another opportunity to go over my in-law's house, so I'm gonna see if I can uh, test the tolerances on this, this latest print. It's kind of a failed print. I'm back from my in-law's house and I've got some good information. As I was trying to fit the knob on the toaster oven, it was pretty tight, but it still fit. And, but then it broke and then it almost got stuck on there. But that's okay because I was able to get it off. I don't think they noticed, or if they did, they probably just chalked it up to something weird Dan's doing in their kitchen. I've made a few changes and I'm ready to print version four. I increased the brim size of the print from four millimeters to eight millimeters and I double checked the level of the bed, made a slight adjustment. Hopefully that'll help with the adhesion. The total print time for this was an hour and 42 minutes. Let's see what we got. I have another opportunity to attempt to fit this knob on my in-laws toaster oven. So stealth fix in progress. Things are looking good. It fits pretty well. I think I want to make it just like a millimeter deeper and I'm going to tighten up the key just a little bit. I probably could have just left this one in place, but I'm going to tweak it a little bit more, tighten it up a little bit. This one, totally functional. Let's just go the extra mile, I mean half millimeter, and tighten this thing up. And this is what a failed print looks like. So the extruder is just sitting in midair, just bitting plastic out into nothingness, and it turns into a big web of art. So that print was a failure, and that means it's time to try again. And just like that, magically, we are done with this print. Took an hour and 39 minutes. Here we have it. 
This is the fifth version of the knob, and now I just need to try it out. I've got a little opportunity here to go try out the fifth version of the knob, and if it works, I'm just gonna leave it in place, and that'll be awesome. Hey, that fits pretty well, nice and tight. I think we're good to go. Let this be a lesson to all of you out there. If you ever give me control of the keys to your house, I may just fix your toaster oven knob. Mission accomplished. Now, could I have gone online, found that knob, shipped it, installed it for just a few dollars and almost no effort? That's not the point. This was more fun. Thanks for watching. If you want to see future videos, just hit that subscribe button.